Osteo Health Company, in collaboration with Dr. Homa Zadeh, presents an innovative approach to the treatment of recession defects with mucograft collagen matrix and the minimally invasive vestibular incision subperiosteal tunnel access VISTA approach. Dr. Homa Zadeh is an associate professor at the University of Southern California, USC School of Dentistry and a diplomate of the American Board of Periodontology. In addition to his Doctor of Dental Surgery degree, Dr. Zadeh earned a PhD in Immunology from the University of Connecticut Schools of Dental Medicine and Medicine. He directs the Laboratory for Immunoregulation and Tissue Engineering, LIGHT, funded by the National Institutes of Health and serves as editorial reviewer for several scientific journals. Dr. Zadeh is the director of the USC Periodontal and Implant Symposium, as well as the USC Comprehensive Surgical and Restorative Implant Training Program. Dr. Zadeh has published extensively. He also maintains a part-time private practice limited to periodontology. The presentation that follows provides guidance on how Dr. Homa Zadeh addresses multiple contiguous gingival recession defects in his private practice using a minimally invasive approach in conjunction with mucograft collagen matrix. By using mucograft, Dr. Zadeh eliminates the need for a remote donor site, as is required with autologous grafts. Mucograft is a three-dimensional collagen matrix which provides a ready-to-use alternative to autogenous soft tissue grafts by acting as a scaffold for the regeneration of gingiva or mucosa. Mucograft is a bilayer matrix. The compact layer provides strength and allows the matrix to be easily sutured. The spongy layer is designed to add volume and scaffolding for vascularization and soft tissue integration. Several recent randomized controlled clinical studies have verified the effectiveness of mucograft in treating gingival recession defects, comparing favorably to connective tissue grafts. The patient presents with significant contiguous Miller Class I recession defects extending from the maxillary left canine to the maxillary left second premolar. In conjunction with a minimally invasive tunneling technique, the surgeon will place mucograft collagen matrix and coronally advance the gingival marginal tissues to cover the denuded root surfaces. Initial preparation of exposed root surfaces includes thorough scaling and root planing, as well as odontoplasty to reduce any cervical prominences of roots that extend beyond the confines of the alveolar housing Root preparation begins with ultrasonic scaling of the exposed root areas using a fine tip scaler. Care is taken not to traumatize the marginal gingiva. Further scaling of the root surfaces is continued with a coarse diamond-coated football tip attached to a piezo scaler. A rotary finishing burr is then used to complete the odontoplasties in order to reduce the profile of each exposed root surface, improving the chances for successful root coverage. The goal is also to make each root surface as smooth as possible. Root preparation is completed using manual root planing. The roots are then conditioned for three minutes with 24% buffered EDTA gel in order to eliminate the bacterial smear layer, any root surface toxins, and to expose collagen fibers. EDTA is burnished into the root surfaces to improve its root conditioning effectiveness. The EDTA is then carefully suctioned from the surgical field followed by sterile saline, which is used to thoroughly rinse the EDTA gel from the surgical field. The VISTA technique calls for a vestibular access incision, which in this patient is placed between the left central and lateral incisor teeth. The incision is approximately 1.5 centimeters long and is made through the periosteum in order to allow the creation of a subperiosteal tunnel. Beginning with a VISTA-1 straight-shanked periosteal elevator, a subperiosteal tunnel is prepared, extending just beyond the most distally treated tooth. In order to avoid soft tissue perforation, the elevator must remain against the bone at all times. A Vista II periosteal elevator with a curved shank is then used to extend the tunnel further distally. The tunnel is extended beyond the mucogingival margin. Using the shorter Vista III and longer Vista IV elevators with bayonet curves, the tunnel is elevated through the gingival sulci of the treated teeth to facilitate low-tension coronal advancement. Vista 3 is used to elevate the marginal tissues closest to the access opening, and Vista 4 for elevation of the more distal sites. The tunnel is extended interproximally under each papilla as far as the embrasure space will permit without perforating through the papilla. 
Papillary reflection extends to the papilla distal to the most distally treated tooth. While making no surface incisions, the entire mucoperiosteal complex of each papilla is elevated away from the underlying bone. At each treated tooth, a 6O polypropylene horizontal mattress suture on a C3 needle is placed approximately 2 to 3 millimeters apical to the gingival margin, spanning close to the width of the tooth. If possible, place the suture within the zone of the keratinized tissue. The suture is tied loosely so that the knot can be positioned at the mid-coronal area of each tooth. Hydrofluoric acid is next carefully placed on the buccal prosthetic crown surfaces of the premolar teeth to acid etch the porcelain in preparation for bonding sutures following coronal advancement of the gingival margins. Hydrofluoric acid remains on the porcelain for approximately one minute, after which it is suctioned and the area irrigated with sterile saline. The facial enamel surface of the maxillary left canine is then acid etched for less than five seconds and then suctioned and thoroughly irrigated and dried. The gingival margin is then coronally advanced with minimal tension beyond the CEJ to the most coronal level possible of the interproximal papillae. Once coronally advanced, the gingival margin covers the previously exposed premolar crown margins. The polypropylene sutures are then secured to the facial aspect of each tooth by placing a small amount of flowable light-cured composite over each suture knot, preventing apical migration of the gingival margin during early stages of healing. The extended suture ends are removed with a scalpel. A small amount of additional composite is placed over the sharp edges of the suture knot. The bonded sutures can be removed after three weeks or at the discretion of the clinician. Over time, the gingival margin will reposition itself at the level of the CEJ. Using a periodontal probe, the distance from the maxillary left canine to the distal aspect of the second premolar is measured. A properly sized mucograft matrix is then lightly wetted with sterile saline. Although in other procedures, mucograft is positioned dry, in the VISTA tunneling technique, lightly wetting the mucograft facilitates smooth placement throughout the length of the tunnel. It is best to wet the mucograft immediately prior to placement inside the tunnel. Using a tissue forceps, mucograft is inserted through the vestibular access opening, the full length of the subperiosteal tunnel. The compact layer should face upwards, and the spongier surface should face toward bone. Mucograft should cover all portions of the exposed roots. Excessive pressure should be avoided as it may compress the matrix. After mucograft comes in contact with blood, there is approximately a one-minute window when its position can be adjusted. Beyond one minute, the consistency of mucograft changes and should no longer be manipulated. Following placement of mucograft, the midline incision is approximated and sutured primarily with multiple 6-O polypropylene sutures.